Yetis that we need to free, so that's good. Whoa, Caleb. What happened? I feel like an ice lolly. Did those rip talks put me on ice? He gets. Thank you, Spyro. Wait, what? Wait, what? There was an entire line not written in text, and he said egad, not gosh, thank you, Spyro. So if you're playing this without sound, you're probably wondering, like, what the frig all that dialogue is, because it makes no sense. Everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 11 of Spyro Enter the Dragonfly for the Sony PlayStation Ghosts. So, we did this mini game up here, and yeah, it turned out to be a pretty fun, super easy 30 second challenge. I don't even know if it took 30 seconds, and here's one of the last of the Yetis that we need to free, so that's good. Whoa, Caleb. What happened? I feel like an ice lolly. Did those rip talks put me on ice? He gets. Thank you, Spyro. Wait, what? Wait, what? There was an entire line not written in text, and he said egad, not gosh, thank you Spyro. So if you're playing this without sound, you're probably wondering like what the frig all that dialogue is, because it makes no sense. Also there's still a mini game missing. Uh, which way was it that we needed to go for the Yeti? Oh yeah, we failed up here. Because of my stupidity, so... Actually, I don't think you need to glide here. So yeah, one of them's gonna be up here, obviously, and then the other one is back to beginning. Okay. Just double-checking to make sure I didn't pull a dum-dum maneuver. Alrighty, thank you. Also, I still don't know where the last minigame is. Also, camera angle? Thank you. And yeah, we know where the last one is. Those tricky rip talks caught me off guard, Spyro. Many thanks for your help. Thank you, Gunther, but, um... Yeah, what I'm confused about is why you guys aren't as smart sounding as Bentley. Like, is Bentley just like an abnormal one? Also, it really, it's really funny because like, right, are you serious? It, it did that thing where it just didn't work. Also, hey, we can get behind the door now. Hopefully that's a shortcut. Get back here, you. There, there we go. We got Danzel. Hey, it's Danzel. Nice. All right, super easy one. Oh, oops, that's not what I meant to click, but at least that'll tell us. Uh, yeah, we're still missing quite a few gems and five on thin ice. We got Spitfire factories behind the doors, hunting whip talks on the ledge. One of them is going to be the um. I know what they all are. I, I know what all of them, but one are. I think the chest has gems in it. It might be a dragonfly in there. That might be the other one. Cause I know what all the other ones are. Whoa, whatever that was was. Oh yeah, I still don't get why that can destroy the life um bottles, but not anything else. It's funny though that literally you have a power specifically used for only capturing the collectible of the game. It literally cannot do anything else, and it's super funny to think about it like that. Like. It's kind of like the water breath in A Hero's Tale as well. You can see that there are a lot of things that were going to be used in both. This isn't the On Thin Ice one, is it? Maybe it is. Shadow. Hey, it's Shadow. Why did they put two of the dragonflies so close together? Now I... Oh yeah, I can't use that other one. Um, I really want to go back and check though if that one counts as the On Thin Ice one. It was! That makes no sense, because that's not Thin Ice, but... Whatever, I know one of them is... Oop, I almost clicked quit game and don't want to have that happen, so... Yeah, um... I know one of them is... or two of them are going to be the same minigame. I'm pretty sure they're the same minigame. Is this what you mean by thin ice right here? Also, there's a checkpoint here. I never realized that before. So the fact that you can jump on ice in this game kind of ruins the whole ice physics of Spyro. The hard part was supposed to be that you couldn't jump on ice, but the game is just like... Oh, there's the minigame. I didn't realize how much of this level actually takes place afterwards, you know? Wait, and this is the only thing here. There's a checkpoint right there, but there's a minigame right here. Yeah, this is the skiing one. This is the hardest part about this entire level, by the way. Nice. 
Hopefully the chest has the rest of the gems. That's what I'm hoping for. We're only- we're missing 110. That's quite a few gems, honestly. Welcome to our ancient side, Spyro. Get to the bottom before time runs out. Sliding between flags will give you more time. If you can make it to the bottom in time, I'll have a special prize for you. And I, I'm pretty sure you can die. And honestly, even in the next level, which is the level that I love, but is kind of difficult, it also has this gimmick. Also, I'm pretty sure those are supposed to slow you, not stutter you like that. And yeah, this one does get progressively more difficult. I don't even know how I hit that flag, but thank you. Yeah, see, there's also different pathways. I'm pretty sure that one up there is a shortcut, but I believe it's more dangerous. Which is the case with, like, a lot of these levels in their, um, slides. Hopefully we don't fail. I just realized how little time you actually get to beat these. It's not very much time at all. Also, what is that flag position? My lord, man. Uh-oh. I thought I failed that for a second. Come on, Spyro. You got this right, buddy. Oh, we made it with 0.50 seconds left. Hello. Very impressive slide work. Here, I found this dragonfly wandering around down here. Nice. What's your name, buddy? Hubert. <laughs> hey, it's Cube. Um, we said Cube, not Cubert. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's more difficult. Oh, yeah, see, like, there's a ramp and everything already. I don't think the timer's any different, but I think the challenge itself is more difficult. Whoa, oh come on, that, oh no, that's gonna cost me time, valuable, precious time that I don't currently have a lot of. Oh, I hear the slowdown happening because there's so much, like you're moving so fast that, that the game just like jankifies it, you know? Whoa. Nice. This was a really... Are you serious? He just didn't jump. And Sabbard is, like I said, that does count as a life, I'm pretty sure. Alrighty, let's do this again. I think we can beat this. Well, I know I can. I've beat it before. It's, it's not like it's. I'm saying that it's not beatable. Obviously it is. I've 100% of this game before. As a kid, never did it when I let's play it on another channel, because let's be real, that was not fun in the slightest, because it kept freezing, and then it even deleted save data, and it's just not enjoyable. It's this pathway here, right there, that it kind of creates, like, um, issues with the frame rate for just, like, a brief second. Alright, there we go, that's some, uh, good time. There we go, and we got the jump that time. I think that literally cuts, like, the, the race down by half. Oh, no, completely failed that one. I think the more narrow the flags are, the bigger the, um, yeah, the bigger the, uh, time boost is. And, yeah, we actually finished this one easier. I'm sure we died once, but that's it. Very impressive. Oh, he's just gonna say the same thing. And now we have... Dancer. I can't tell if he said, um, I can't tell if he said dance or dancer, but I swear he said dance and not dancer. I know for a fact that he called the other one Cube and not Q-Bert. For whatever reason, a lot of the recorded voice doesn't actually line up with the dialogue. Either they cut off some of the dialogue when they're speaking, or they add extra, like that one Yeti had way more voice lines than was actually typed out for him. I really feel sorry for the companies that made this game, though, because the game legitimately died after it was made. Like, it just... It just never... The, the, the comp... Or not the game died, the companies died, so the, they never got to make another game again. Some of them did move on to new jobs. Excuse me for the hiccups. 
But, uh, yeah, that was it. Also, we gotta go... Oh, no, we actually... This actually looped around. Nice, because I need to go back for the uh, Yeti that was over here. Because that's the exit portal. I never take the exit portals. It's just a lot of the time in a really awkward spot in this game, and it just... Let's be real, doesn't make this very convenient. Also, yay, we made it this time, unlike last time where it was... Don't tell me we're going to be missing exactly 100 gems in this Oh, never mind! That was all the gems. Nice, and that's the final one of you, which is the final dragonfly. Cheerio, Spyro! That's a good dragon! I'm pretty sure that's the last dragonfly, right? No, there's one more. What is it? I actually have no idea what it is now that I think about it. Oh, it's the chest! Doi! So we actually need to backtrack. So we need to go back for the chest and to Bartholomew. So don't go through the door. Because over here is the chest, which should be the second last dragonfly. And then Bartholomew will drop the last one. Excellent! That worked out perfectly. Yay! Haha! <laughs> young. Hey, it's young! See, you actually pronounced that one, and I wasn't cutting off the dialogue last time. The the dialogue recorded and written is so different in this game, it can be ridiculous. I'm pretty sure there's a level 2 later on that gets even worse. What was that? I'm not really complaining, I just want to know what that was. Just... Oh, we're at the minigame portal, really? That wasn't even where we had the checkpoint, though. Like, the checkpoint was legitimate. Was legitimately. Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. I forgot. One thing about this game that other Spire games don't do is lives respawn. So, if you know where there's a life, you can just go back for it. But we need to go back for Bartholomew now. Now, this time, please don't, like, send me off the edge for no reason at all. That was just. That was just annoying. It wasn't even frustrating. It's just annoying. Because, like I said, the, uh. Checkpoints in this game leave a lot to be desired with, like, positioning. And here we go! Bartholomew. Okay. Oh, I might as well grab health then. then. After this, we can go to Honey Marsh. Nice. Um, hello? There we go. I needed to wait for the triangle to pop up. Thank you, Spyro. The Yeti will always welcome you with open arms. Thank you. And the final dragonfly is ours. Hey, it's Jewelwing. Wow, okay, you actually said that. Also, why is your name Jewelwing? That's really weird. And with that being done, we can actually exit the level. Nice. We actually got a lot of progress done in this last uh, episode and a half, I guess. We still have time to do stuff. It's pretty good. Okay, 4,900 gems. Oh, yeah, never mind. There's 900 gems. We had 4,000. It should be 4,800. But, for whatever reason, the gem total counts the uh, gems that Moneybag took. Which is something that other Spyro games don't do, but when you beat the game, you normally get them back. And then in, of course, uh, Hero's Tale that we played, um, it actually... Uh, whatchamacallit... It didn't actually have any collectible gems that were just there. I still remember as a kid being short for chests all the time, and but always collecting gems. In this game, no. I don't think we have enough gems to get to this level yet, do we? Actually, or is this the next level? This actually might be the next level. No, it's Honey, honey Marsh. I don't think we have enough. I can see if we have enough to go to this level. Hello, Mr. Thief. Oh, there we go. You did. Oh, we can. Um... Uh, hang on. There's a button I need to remember how to do. Uh, what button is it? What button is it? Oh wait, it's both of them. You gotta push them down. Okay, that's the one I need to remember. Um, yeah, we're, we're gonna go do Honey Marsh first. Eh, that level, trust me, there are gems in that level that are so ridiculous to find that you will not have fun. Also, the fact that the level itself, um, is really janky, and the whole wing shield gimmick, which is only used in that level, by the way, even though you get it as, what, the second ability in the entire game? I think you get it before you get Electric Breath, I think, or you might get it right after you get Electric Breath. Also, you notice that we haven't had to use Electric Breath since? 
yeah, seems kind of weird. Also, one thing I don't like about this game is the backtrack. And I don't mean backtracking to go find things. I mean backtracking to get to the levels. Because you can't warp to a level you've never been to. But Honey Marsh, for whatever reason, is in the first part of the game. You literally... Like, the second half of the game, you can technically do if you get enough dragonflies. So, like, you can go from Monkey Monastery to Thieves' Den to Jurassic Jungle. But Honey Marsh, you can't do... It, even if you 100% the whole world, that level, Luau Island, and everything. So, now we gotta go over here to Honey Marsh and talk to this guy. Oh, that is, uh, scary. Well, that should do it, Spyro. Hop aboard the raft and get ready for the Honey Marsh Rapids. He said, well, that should do it. There was no well in there, but anyway, let's... Anyways, uh... Let's take our flying honeycomb saucer across the river. Oh, okay. As much as like Monkey Monastery's loading screen, no, this nothing beats this one. Also, how much honey do you guys have? That's like diabetes in a river. That is way too much honey. Honey, I shrunk the kids. What time is it? It's currently 12.51. I still need to record. Hang on, I, before I continue this. I gotta think, I recorded three episodes of Spyro 2, two of Crash, and this is part two of this, so I have seven done. So, I might have to record a little more. Also, those honeycombs have things. Now, does this level only have like 600 gems? I know it has 800, it goes 876. How about 8789 8, Like, it just progressively gets shorter. But the levels themselves don't get. Or, the gem totals get smaller, but the levels themselves don't get any shorter. I find it really funny. Also, why are there pigs here? Like, does that make sense in a Honey Marsh game? I don't think so. That just seems really weird. Anyways, I guess we'll see what Jimmy Bob or whatever this guy's name is up to. Welcome to Honey Marsh, Spyro. Them Rick Talk critters have messed this here place up, but good. But good. <laughs> Opie, what? I tells you what, I'll make you a deal as sweet as honey. There are some honey stills draining all the honey from Honey Marsh. You help us get rid of them, and any of them there dragonflies you're going on about that you find along the way, you can keep. Just keep that between us now, you hear? Okay, oh my god, the fact that you have to keep mashing the X button to go through that little tiny bit of dialogue that's off screen is silly. Yeah, if you notice, there's a lot less like blue gems and stuff already. There's a lot more red again. Indicating that the level gem totals are shrinking, but they don't want to decrease like the level size. So what they did was they just made it so you get smaller gems more frequently than large gems. And Wait, how am I down here? I'm so confused. I don't even know what happened there, man. That was just weird. I can't believe I played two Spyro games with Yetis, and we're gonna play a third one soon. Spyro 2! Okay, this weird hillbilly Riptock has a freaking laser gun. That's nice to know. Also, it's like oh, some kind of like hillbilly insult or something, or like crocodile insult. I have no idea. Also, why are hillbilly crocodiles in charge of a honey place? And also, why aren't they eating the Riptocks? It's not technically cannibalism. Lizards eat other lizards all the time. Like, it's not that weird. Um, what are you saying, game? How was I supposed to avoid that? There wasn't even an animation to a shot. It just blew me in the face. I know there's a gem down there. These... Um, okay. <laughs> the gong sound effect. Also, why is there a platform there? The platform doesn't really make any sense why it's there, but sure. I can smell the chicken soup that's being made downstairs. Aha! I got that gem that I totally actually forgot about this time. First time I went through here, didn't forget about it. Second time, did forget about but got it, so... I don't want to fall in the honey, man. Why is there a bee here? Oh, that is an annoying, um... Oh, so you flame it. Once again, your other breath types really seem to have no function in this game. 
And I don't know why. It just seems really weird, you know? These guys are kind of a joke, though, because they just smack you with their little banjos. Also, they all have the same sound effects here. Okay. Are you serious? Also, why is there a bunch of health at the beginning of the level, but not anywhere else? Thank god most of these enemies in this section are just the banjo players and not the laser beam overlords from space. Also makes me really question, why do they always have guns? Like, there were no... like, Ripto doesn't use guns, so why would his minions have guns? You think they'd use magic or just do brute force or something? I've never been happier to see a life outside of being alive, you know? Normally when I see them, I'm already full health, but... Also, he missed me, but then... Okay. Alright, that's two down, four more to go. I also see a very angry bee. Also, wouldn't we be saving the bees, because they're the ones here making this here honey? Oh, thank god, if it... A gem falls over the edge, it bounces back up to you. But if we fall over the edge, we get our butt burned on honey, because that makes total sense. Like, is it hot honey, or, like, what is it? Also, these gems here are just kind of in a weird section. They're just by themselves on a ledge. You can actually hear the thunder in the distance, too. That's a pretty nice touch. Anyways, I think that'll just about do it, because we're recording for 21 minutes. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, join the Discord and the Patreon in the links below, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye-bye.